In difficult days and facing dire circumstances, it is always good to remind ourselves that God is greater than all. Scott Pauley is examining the miracles of Jesus recorded for us in God's Word. Our hope is that the message in these miracles will become real in your life. Christ is enough. Let's open our Bibles and join the study now. I love to read the gospel records with some imagination. I hope it's sanctified imagination, but I want to put myself in their sandals. I want to, I want to sit in the room with them. I want to walk the, the hillside with the Lord. We come today to Luke chapter number 14, and I'm going to ask you to use your sanctified imagination. I want you to come with me into a house, I sit down with a group of people, and I want you to do the very same thing they did. Now, I hope your motive will be better. But listen to Luke 14, verse 1. It came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. Now, I think they were watching him to find fault. They were watching him to criticize. Uh, They were watching him to try to find something wrong with him. But I want you to watch him today through the eyes of a student. Would you watch Jesus? Would you just... Sit down in Luke chapter number 14 and look at the Lord. Watch what he does because he's about to perform one of the most amazing miracles and like all the other miracles, there is a message in the miracle. Luke 14 verse 2, And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. I do wonder, how did this sick man with the dropsy get in the house of one of the chief Pharisees? Was he planted? Uh, Was they... Uh, idea here to to put this man in front of Jesus on the Sabbath day, knowing that Jesus wouldn't turn away from his need so they could criticize him for healing, perhaps. The Bible says in verse 3, Jesus didn't wait on them to, to do or say anything. He preempted them. And Jesus, answering, spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him. And let him go, and answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit, and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to these things. <laughs> Don't you love it? Jesus asked them a question, but he really wasn't looking for information, and he certainly wasn't looking for permission. His question was simply to say to them, I know what you're looking for. I, I know what you're wondering about. And then the Lord Jesus went right on to do what he had already planned to do from the very beginning and to heal this man who had the dropsy. Let's watch Jesus. What, what do we learn in this miracle recorded only by Dr. Luke by our watching of the Lord Jesus today? Well, first of all, as I watch Jesus in this story, it reminds me that every day belongs to him. Every day. Uh, these people had taken the Sabbath day and had instituted so many rules around it, going far beyond what even the law of Moses had required. Uh, they made their own ideas. Up. <laughs> they, they imposed their own expectations on it. Isn't that just like man? And especially, isn't that just like religion to add to what God says? And at other times to take away from what God says or to miss the point altogether. Remember what the Bible says about the Sabbath, that the Sabbath was was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. In other words, God's the one who gave the Sabbath. He started the Sabbath. The Sabbath was his idea. They're looking at Christ who instituted the Sabbath because he's the Son of God, and they're wondering why he's doing what he wants to do on the Sabbath day. Let me just tell you, every day is the Lord's day. Now, I believe that As a New Testament Christian, Sunday is the Lord's Day. It's the day we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. It's the day we gather with his people following the New Testament pattern. I believe the Lord's Day ought to be kept holy and sacred. But friend, every day is a Lord's Day. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day belongs to the Lord. And not only do I learn from watching Jesus that every day belongs to the Lord, but every person is loved by the Lord. It wasn't just the religious people in that room Jesus was interested in. In fact, it would seem that his attention centers now on the one man in the room that's having the hardest time. It's the only time in Scripture we find this 
dropsy. We don't know exactly what it is. Some people have said it was a heart condition. Others have said it was a, a kidney condition. Most Bible students and teachers believe that it would have created some, some uh, not only discomfort, uh, but some definite uh, marks of pain, perhaps even swelling of the body. Here's a man who's suffering. He's a sufferer. I'm so glad that we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. In other words, he feels with us. He feels our pain. Uh, he became the great sufferer. He understands what suffering is, and he loves us. Every day belongs to the Lord. Every person is loved by the Lord, and then every problem is possible for the Lord. And this was nothing to him. It just very matter-of-factly says he took him and healed him and let him go. What a statement. Now, the Lord takes us to himself. Praise God for that. He heals, and yes, he releases us. He, he sends us out different than we came. That's true in every way. Anything the Lord touches is changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There is no problem that is too hard for the Lord. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, no, my friend. There is nothing too hard for God. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So don't miss it. Every day belongs to the Lord. Every person is loved by the Lord. Every problem is possible for the Lord. And then every miracle is a classroom for the Lord. Do you remember where we began this study of our miracles of Jesus? I said to you that every miracle has a message. And that the Lord Jesus did not perform miracles just to give people a show or even just to meet one individual need, but he did it to teach truth, to reveal himself, to, to pass on spiritual understanding to those who would receive it. And indeed, in Luke chapter number 14, Jesus is not just running a clinic, he's holding class. He's holding class in this Pharisee's house, this chief Pharisee that thought he really knew the law. All the lawyers and doctors sitting around who thought they understood the law, uh, the lawgiver was standing in front of them, and he had much more to say to them, not just the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. He basically points out to them that if their animal, their service animal, fell in a ditch on the Sabbath day, they were allowed to pull it out. And then he basically says, if you can do that for animals, why can't I do this for people? I see here our Lord's beautiful compassion for all of humanity. Certainly, he was teaching them something about the humane, uh, what, is, what is right, uh, what is compassionate, what, what the Creator intended, and how people ought to treat each other. Certainly, how believers ought to treat hurting people and sufferers. But I see in this classroom more than the humane, I see the divine. Because he goes right on in verse number 7 to begin to teach them a parable, to deal with their pride, to reveal their their spiritual need, and their spiritual condition. See, the reality was that these Pharisees were in worse shape than the man with the dropsy. There is something worse than being sick, and that's being lost. There is something worse than physical maladies, and that is spiritual disease. And that's what Jesus was truly trying to reveal and change. I'm glad to tell you today that my Lord Jesus, he's the healer. He does heal physically, I believe that. Uh, sometimes he heals like we want him to hear. Sometimes he does it through unusual means. Sometimes he does it through the perfect healing he gives with the new body when he takes us out of this world. But always he is the spiritual healer. And the deepest disease is sin and the greatest need is spiritual. Would you watch Jesus today? And as you watch Jesus, would you allow the Lord not only to touch your life but to teach you his truth? Christ is enough. What an encouragement to know that regardless of the situation, we can trust the Lord Jesus. You can find a Bible reading schedule through the miracles of Jesus and many additional study resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Visit us online today and let us know that you're listening. We are very grateful that you are making this journey with us through God's Word. Until next time, remember this, Christ is enough. Thank you.